the talent I would most like to have is I would love to be able to, to draw the paint. I think that's like a magic trick. I don't know how people do it. If I could change one thing about myself, it would be... Mm, I feel like I'm a little dyslexic, but I will be sitting next to someone reading the newspaper. I'm that, you know, and they can read and kind of get information very fast. It takes me very long. Welcome to VF Hollywood. I'm sitting here with Bill Hader. Hi. Now an SNL alum. Yeah. And starring in The To-Do List, which I love. I'm, I'm just shamelessly plugging it right Aww, here with that's my so premiere nice ticket. You. That's great. Thanks. Written by his wife. Written and directed by and my wife. And directed, yes. right? She doesn't star in it, though. No, she doesn't. This girl is a Val Victorian headed to Georgetown and a nerd and has very little experience um, in the sexual department, basically, yeah. and creates this list, which is very funny when you see it written out, like dry humping, yeah. job, uh, finger banging, was yes. it, or bombing eventually? Finger bomb is what she initially calls it. Yeah. Pearl necklace, which she says, yeah. oh, that sounds elegant. She approaches sex kind of like an AP course, and it's set in 1993, so it's a period piece. Don't you so, love that 1993 now is a period piece? I know, <laughs> I was 15. My favorite. <laughs> I was 15 and now, yeah, it's weird. Like I had my own, you know, I liked certain bands yeah. then. I had my own kind of identity at that point and that, yeah, that was 20 years ago. Let's talk about SNL being done. I mean, eight years, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And a lot of great characters. Is it, it going to be so weird when you're not back on set, I would imagine? A hundred percent. And I think what everyone tells you is, you know, when leaving is one thing. Your last show is one thing, but it's really when... So they come back and you're not there, you know, when October rolls around and you're just going, I'm supposed to be in New York, you know? So Megan Mullally, who I love and mm -hmm. is so funny and obviously from Will and Grace, uh, she was at an improv and just saw you. Yeah. You happened to be so well, her, her husband, right? Yeah, 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 her husband's Nick Offerman. Nick Offerman's younger brother, Matt Offerman, and I were in a, gr in a sketch group together. And this is like 2004 and she went to go see us perform and afterwards we all went to Canner's Deli. Maggie was there mm -hmm. and Maggie and I just started dating and, uh, and uh, she went, you're really funny. You know, that was it, that's all she said. And then we were driving back and Maggie was like, wow, Megan Mullally just said you were funny. How cool is that? How, you know, mm -hmm. like, she just said you were funny. And, um, and then I was in my editing bay I was working as an assistant editor on Iron Chef America, and I was working, and Megan Mullally called, called us, and Lauren Michaels uh, would like to meet you. Um, can you fly out tomorrow? You know, I'd taken a couple of classes. You're from Oklahoma. I'm from Oklahoma. I got a couple <laughs> of classes at Second City yeah. LA, and I got yeah. lucky. Megan Mullally saw me and recommended me to Lauren, and I got the show, and I was going, I, I, they made a huge mistake. Um, so it was a lot about just learning and kind of, the best thing that SNL does is that you fail constantly, even when you have a big hit. My first show, I actually did an Al Pacino impression and it got like a big ovation and then Andy and I went on update and it went great and everybody was talking about it and at the after party, it was this big kind of thing and then I, I was like, oh, great. And then I went in Monday and I did my first, you know, my pitch and it bombed, and then I was like, oh yeah, right, I'm not funny, you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you're just going, smack down Yeah, they, they smack you down, and that never changes. So it keeps you working hard, it keeps you humble, and it, and, and it helps you move forward. I, I read in an article, I think it was in GQ, the writer said that you, um, getting you to take credit for your success is like getting a dog to swallow a pill. <laughs> That's true. Is it true? Is that like Oklahoma? Yeah. That Can might be a little Oklahoma, yeah. yeah. I remember working on the X Files as a PA, and I came in and I brought like coffee into the writers, and just seeing those guys in the writers' room on X Files and going, "Man, I would love to have like a job like that." You know how cool that would be, like just breaking the story down and stuff. And um, and now I get to do that on South Park. That's what I do on right. South Park. I just kind of hang out, and so I when anytime those PAs come in and bring in food and stuff, What's uh, your I'm work? horrible to them. Yep, I'm you just, are me. Yeah, I'm just like get out of Shut here. Shut up. Give me a Snickers. This is what they did to me. What is your worst uh, vice when you guys are writing either on SNL or obviously uh, in South Park? Like, uh, is it the food is just heroin, crap? Heroin. Right? Are you funnier on drugs? 
no, I'm not funny on drugs at all. People always, like when I was in high school, I remember we had the really cool, uh, you know, the really cool English teacher who was doing drugs and would go do drugs with everybody. He would like smoke pot with people and he thought he was really cool. I mean, he just thought I was filled to the brim with LSD all the time because I was so freaking weird in high school. And that was a thing, my senior quote that they gave me was him going, Hater, you don't smoke the doobage? Which was not not delivered in a funny way. That was, that's how that guy talked. And he was our teacher, our AP English teacher. Hater, you don't smoke the doobage. And I said, no, I don't. My greatest extravagance is Criterion Blu-rays. Kind of upset. The words or phrases I most overuse are like. Anytime I see myself on a uh, TV show, I say like a lot, and I don't like it. I consider my greatest achievement to be uh, being a dad. <laughs>